Hello, and welcome everybody to the first learning episode of an opinionated guide to pandas. Uh, today we're going to be taking the first dip into pandas, so if you've already done that before, you're welcome to skip this. Uh, we'll be covering a lot of the stuff that we do in this uh, in this episode uh, in a lot more detail in later uh, in later ones. So if you're if you're very new to pandas, if you think that would be really beneficial, go ahead, stick right in. This will be fun. If you just want to sort of hear me uh, sort of prattle on, that's also great. Continue on. Otherwise, if you already know pandas a little bit and you just kind of wanted to get that intermediate feel of pandas and see what a real data scientist, uh, what functions a real data scientist uses, uh, you might want to skip this one and head on right to the next one. So, an opinionated guide to pandas. Uh, I'm going to start off by showing you the two main reasons, the two data structures that people use for pandas. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'll go ahead and I will import pandas right up here. Uh, generally, people import pandas is PD. Um, so pandas, panel data, um, so you've got panel data, PD. Uh, in addition to this, I import NumPy as well. Um, if you don't know this, uh, the uh, NumPy site has excellent tutorials and excellent resources on this, uh, better than pandas, if I, if I may say so. That's, again, no shade on pandas. I absolutely love it. Um, but there's a reason why I decided to make a video series for pandas instead of NumPy. I feel like the NumPy resources out there are already really good. Um, NumPy is a is a, a great tool to use in, in uh, conjunction with pandas, and if you actually know a little bit about NumPy's, it will help you uh, it will it will help you understand pandas itself. So pandas has has two main uh, data structures that help us uh, as a data scientist deal with data. Uh, the first structure that it has is called a series. Um, and as always, if you're using IPython notebook, you can go ahead and put a little question mark after these things. If you run this cell. It'll go ahead and it will give you a little bit of information about this. So the panda series object, um, it's a one-dimensional ND array. The way I like to think about a series is it's a column. It's basically one column in an Excel notebook. Um, in this case, series in pandas have some cool functionality as well. Uh, they're a little bit numpy-like, they're a little bit dictionary-like, and they also um, have uh, speedy vectorized operations, uh, so that makes them really cool. Uh, but what you need to know about them is these things below. So we've we've got a couple of inputs here. I'm going to go over the inputs that I personally use when constructing series, um, and I'm going to skip all of the ones that I never use. Um, so I use basically these three inputs. Uh, so one, the data itself. So this is the data that's going to fill it. Two, the index. Um, so in this case, the index is, is kind of cool when you're dealing with time data. Otherwise, it's not as cool. And then the name of the series. So let's make a series object that looks like this. So we'll have numpy. Let's go ahead and give us five random integers with the index a, b, c, d, and e. Uh, so we get uh, five random integers. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we get an index, which is on this left-hand side of a, b, c, d, and e. This would sort of be like that leftmost row on your Excel spreadsheet. It's sort of uh, what, what does this row represent? In this case, it would represent specimen a, specimen b, specimen c. Uh, and then the name, uh, the name is down here, for example. Um, now, generally speaking, I don't construct series by hand. Um, you'll, you'll notice a lot of these tutorials, they begin with, Here, here's the data structure you use, it's a data frame in a series, and you can construct them like this. Uh, generally, most people don't uh, actually construct these by hand. They'll be reading these, these data structures in from somewhere else. Um, however, manipulating these guys is very, very important. Um, so we can sort of see what this looks like. Um, the name, in this case, you might be wondering, why did we name it? it? I mean, other than having this name down here, it seems to be not super important. Uh, the only reason you name it is if you're going to be constructing a data frame later on, uh, this will be the name of the column. Um, so is that really important when creating most series? Uh, generally not, but I did know about it, so I figured I'd let you know. The other arguments to the series, um, uh, Copy, fast path, D type. I mean, they are useful, but I've I've honestly never used them before. Um, maybe that just sort of reflects on on the quality of person I am. Um, so series, uh, series have sort of numpy like properties. Um, so if we go ahead and we put a single number in as well as multiple indices, you'll notice the single number will get repeated multiple times. Uh, in numpy, this is called broadcasting. And you'll see lots of, of examples of, of series broadcasting later on. Uh, series have array-like properties as well. You can get the first element of the series with just of zero. You can slice as, as you would sort of a normal Python list. Um, 
uh, you've got this as well. You can get multiple entries from this array by passing uh, into this, and, and so you you pass into the uh, into the the square brackets here uh, an array with indices, and we'll actually give you these indices in that particular order. So E, D, and B. Um, this is NumPy like. So NumPy actually is the one that does this. Um, if you want to get at the actual uh, underlying data of a series, you can use s.values. As you notice, uh, it's a NumPy array. Uh, so Pandas heavily uses NumPy. Um, a lot of people uh, use NumPy in order to sort of get the performance. A lot of the power of, of numerical Python comes from uh, these libraries that have done a lot of work to get this really, really heavy performance. Um, in addition to that, you can, of course, uh, select where the index is something. So this is like a map-like or a dictionary-like in, in Python lingo. Uh, so if we want to find where uh, our series is E, uh, so it's specimen E, we can set that value to 500. Um, and you'll notice it sets it to equal to 500 down here. Um, so generally speaking, I, I don't use these operations. They're, they're nice. And, and sometimes they are nice to have. It rarely, though, they are nice to have. But sometimes they're nice to have. Instead, what I see most data scientists do, in, in myself included, is we go ahead and we index into a series using an array of trues or falses. Um, so in this case, true, true, false, false, true. Uh, so this will give us the, the first, the second, and the final uh, um, uh, thing in our series, so A, B, and, and E. Uh, and it will skip out on the ones that are false. And you might be wondering, Nate, that's pretty weird. Why would you ever index into a series like this? Uh, I think the major reason why you index into a series like this is because it allows us to do a selection. Uh, so for example, we can go ahead and figure out which of our series elements, I guess I was going to print this out here, but I'll, I'll do it here as well, is greater than zero uh, by going ahead and doing s greater than zero. And it will broadcast this operation. Oh, there, I guess there were. So greater than maybe 0.5. There we go. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll broadcast this operation over every single element in the series. Uh, what broadcasting means is it means it takes this one operation. This is generally used for a single point. So you would basically say like, hey, is the first entry greater than five? Is the second entry greater than five? But we go ahead and we apply this operation to everything in our series. And you do it really fast. Anytime you're operating on a column in pandas, you're doing it generally the right way. Uh, pandas is fastest if you were doing columnar operations. So you're, you're operating on a single column on a series at a time. Um, so, for example, I could pass this array of true, true, false, false, true into S. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and make this actually 0.5 because we got a little bit lucky or unlucky here. Um, and it will give me out the exact same thing I did, did up here. So true, true, false, false, true. So one, two, three. So first, second, and final one. Um, this is incredibly common. Um, for example, you can go ahead and take everything that's below 0.5 and multiply it times negative 1. Uh, so everything that's below 0.5. So you find, let's go ahead and apply the uh, is less than 0.5, trues or falses we get. Then we go ahead and we select all those examples that were less than 0.5. And then we multiply them equal to negative 1. And what do we get? All of our small examples here are going to be less than or are going to be negative 1 or are going to be negative in this case. Um, not negative one. <laughs> so this is the stuff that I see all the time. And this is incredibly useful in, in lots of specific examples. Um, if you're interested in this type of thing, uh, please do join me for the pandas exercises that we're going to do together uh, as you get to watch me sort of fumble around. Um, it, I've, I've, again, I never have seen these exercises before. It's just going to be just going to be me, you, and the computer for a little bit. Um, but it's incredibly useful for tons of operations. You might be interested to find all the customers that have purchased above $500 this year. You might be interested in zeroing out all the customers that have purchased less than $1 each year because these guys aren't going to be recurring. Um, so, so these types of what I would call broadcasting operations are extremely common. So greater than, very common. Adding series together. So let's add what they spent on baseball plus what they spent on football together. Uh, so in this case, I added them to themselves. Uh, you can take the exponentiation of them, uh, and you can even do columnar aggregate operations. So in this case, s dot mean. Um, and you might be wondering, well, Nate, how, how, in, how in God's name did you know that? Um, well, you can always do an s dot and do a little tab completion here to figure out all of the different uh, functions that are associated with this series. So for example, I can go ahead and look at maybe the absolute value of every single element in the series now that I multiplied sometimes negative 1. 
and this will give me everything in a positive sense. Um, I will talk a little bit more about aggregations later on. Uh, it's, it's a really big part of, of pandas itself, and there is a, a general way to go ahead and uh, go about it, but this will help you out, at least in the meantime. Um, just be careful with some operations. If the indices don't match up, you'll get NANDs. So in this case, you might be thinking, oh, let's go ahead and take uh, our series S and let's add on to it. And let's take all of the examples that are greater than a specific point and add them onto it. Uh, you know, the problem is um, this only contains three. It contains this guy, it contains this guy, and it contains this guy in terms of uh, what numbers this, this sort of series here contains. And so it doesn't have an index to match up to C or D. So when I go ahead and I say C, which was in something point uh, four or five plus nothing that's there, it goes ahead and gives a NAN. So always be careful with indices. If you get NANs like this, sort of think about it and, and make sure to just, just check yourself. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of intuition as to what series tools have been useful for me. Um, okay, let's go ahead and uh, head next to data frames.